You know, something I've learned playing video games is that mages are the bee's knees. I love magic. Magic is so cool to me. And whether it's an, whether it's an MMO or it's some sort of RPG, I will always pick the class that does something magical. But there are many types of mages, or just magical spellcasters, whatever. And we're going to go through them, from, from my personal experience. Wizards. And the phrase on this one says, what's your lowest save game? What's your lowest save again? <laughs> Wizards haven't always been the strongest. And this little caption says it. What's your lowest save? Because you don't want to get your ass kicked. <laughs> when I think of wizards, I think of base magic. Like, not not a fire bolt, but just a magic bolt. Just like a concentrated magical energy being blasted at you. Maybe some minor spells, some support spells, but that's about it. But my favorite, my favorite wizard was from a game MMO called Grand Fantasia. And wizards with the bee's knees, alright? We're gonna kick your ass. And my favorite ability they had was teleport, because they could teleport forward. And there was another class called the Berserker. And the Berserker could bull rush you, which would stun you. But the best save for it was if you, um, when they bull rush you, if you use your teleport ability, you could teleport right past them. And you would not get stunned. Because cause technically speaking, you dodged it. And they're really good at kiting. Like, they would stun you, freeze you, hit you with a KB stun, which is a knockback stun. Knock you back further, stun you. Play, they basically treat you like a yo-yo. And they were just really OP. And they use all the elements. Um, Not all of them, but you know. The basic. Ice, fire, lightning. They were dope on a rope. Number two, sorcerers. Reach out and touch somebody. Now, sorcerers... On a lot of games, a sorcerer is usually... It's a woman. Which would be a sorceress, actually. A sorcerer would be a guy. But usually the sorcerer class is a woman. Or it's more geared towards women. I've seen that on a lot of MMOs. But my favorite game that had a sorcerer was... D um D D Dragon's Dogma. Dragon's Dogma no Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen, yeah. And that game was the bee's knees. Now Dragon's Dogma is basically Fire the Colossus, um, Skyrim and Dark Souls put together. And if they like if they relaunched that game, it would go so well. Like people would just slept on it. It, it went unnoticed. Like, that game could have been everything. But it had a sorcerer class, and the sorcerer class went hard. Now, just like the wizard had the three elements, it had your ice, your fire, your lightning, and it was good. Now, there's one move called, like, bond lid, and you can make um, a meteor come down, or glacius, where it'd be like, I'm talking about, like, like, five yard long ice would just appear from your staff and would just blast out. It was the coolest thing ever. And it was the only class that had, um, that could undo petrif petrification. Because once you got petrified, it would slowly start to turn you to stone or petrify or whatever. But that's the only class that could undo it. So whenever you fought a monster that uses petrification heavily, like that, you, you wouldn't have that class. So you, know, you can survive. The so others may die, but you won't. But yes, those sorcerers are the shit. <laughs> when I think of a sorcerer, I don't think of a wand. I think of like a staff. And I think of like a pegasus. I like Dumbledore. i never seen Dumbledore as a wizard. i seen him as a sorcerer. Him. Um, the dude from Lord of the Rings. I don't know his name. Oh well, get mad if you wanna. Now we're on to the specialties. Now, the cleric has always been mixed with me. When I think cleric, I think of high magical defense. Not physical defense, just magical defense. Healing and, of course, a mace. A mace, maybe like um, some sort of holy relic, a Bible or a totem or something. 
But clerics come in two flavors in my mind. You have the aggressive ones that are big and tough, and then you have the more elegant, agile-looking ones, more little skinny. And they just, they they're um the more healers or support base. But I've seen in some games we have clerics that are literally why would just beat you in. Like the clerics are so strong, they're basically paladins, and a paladin is basically like uh, is usually seen as a holy defender, the class of justice and might and stuff like that. My favorite game that had clear would be Dark Souls. Now I pl- I played Dark Souls one extensively. Dark Souls two I I dabbled in, but didn't really play that much. Um, Dark Souls three haven't remotely touched and probably never gonna do it. But I love the clerics in Dark Souls one. Like it was a nice balance. I could be really magic magically focused. But I also have my mace, I can always swing at you. And I like the concept of having a mace and being in a nice robe. Uh, some cleric robes. Something like that. I liked it. Another game that had a good cleric was back to Grand Fantasia, the MMO. Um, you, the holy path broke off. Because there was like a sage class. It was kind of like a druid. But then but if you stayed with the standard holy path... There was a cleric, and then after cleric, you became a prophet. Then there was a saint. And basically, in that game, in that game the clerics had high magical defense, and they were one of the first classes to get anti-stun. Like, when it came to skill-wise, they got the anti-stun, they got the anti-stun first. They couldn't share with everybody, but they can make sure that they, they, can make sure that they didn't get stunned. And I like that about them. They had anti-stun. Um, they... It was called uh, Visions of End, which is like a fear move. And what fear does, it would root you. Think of it like a stun, basically. Except you're not stunned, you're just rooted. Like, you can't move. Like, some people, when the, some games, when you're stunned, if someone hits you, you're unstunned. But with fear, it's different. But yeah, that was my. F- those are two. Those two games are my favorite cleric classes. Um. No, not so. Not many games that branch off with holy magic. Like, there's like holy magic. You do some yellow light or white light, and that's it. You like you got like beam attacks or like shield, but as I said, a cleric is usually a support class anyway. So they wouldn't have many assault moves from the first place. But at the same time, I really want a game that has a good holy magic character. That really branches off with the clear class. With a clear theme, I should say. No- this is one of my favorite classes. Um, the Necromancy class, for me, i always seen it as I can summon endless backup and I can just kick your butt with it. That's that's I've always processed it as. It was, you toy with undead. It had this nice. You always have a nice gothic theme to it. Um, it was always the underdog class. Who doesn't like 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 who doesn't like the underdog? Necromancy and a lot of MMOs. The necromancer is a debuffer. Where like your cleric or healer would be the buffer, or if there's an enchanter class, they would be the buffer. But the necromancer was the debuffer. And in one game, once again, bringing up Grand Fantasia, um, the Necromancer class basically you would have your summon, and your summon would attack. And what you would do, you would debuff and use DOTs. A DOT, DOT stands for damage over time. And basically, you would just keep on hitting it with DOTs and debuffs while your summon keeps on attacking them and weakening and, um, and beating them up while you basically weaken them. And even in PvP, if you were good at it, a lot of people would be. A lot of newbie PvPers would be fooled into thinking, oh, I just attack the summon. No, don't attack the summon. Attack the summoner. That's a rule I've always had. No matter what game it is, don't attack the summon. Attack the summoner. Because in a lot of games, the summon is connected to the summoner. So once you kill the summoner, the summon goes away too. Two birds, one stone. Unless you really want XP or you're trying to get a lot of item drops, then yeah, kill the summon and wait to get the summoner. Um, my favorite game for necromancy would be Skyrim. My worst would be 
um, it's, the worst one for me is in between Dragon's Dogma, Dark Arisen, and Dragon Age Inquisition. But I'll start with my favorite. My favorite one is Skyrim because it's very in-depth. And there's just so much you can do. You can summon stuff, but I prefer to actually, like, rise stuff from the dead. Like, I would go out and hunt down, like, cool-looking bodies or whatever. I'd be like, oh, look at that guy right there. I'm going to get him. Then stab, stab, stab. Got him. Rec- um, resurrected him. Then I just rinse, just rinse and repeat this process. It was, <laughs> it was really fun to do. And it was like, you go out and look for the perfect body. Like, oh, this person looks strong. I can use them. And maybe feel like a really necromancer. And then once you take the mods and put it in the game and use them with Skyrim, you could even go even more in-depth with it. Like, do certain rituals. Or, like, you would... It was one mod. It was called... um I forgot. But it, you had to, like, really work your way through the necromancy tree. And you had to learn certain aspects of necromancy. You had to start with simple skeletons and work your way up. Like, yeah, you could still use the base game spells, but doing it this way added an extra level of immersion to it. You had a little secret layer you could use. It was a really cool concept that I liked a lot. And then you could move your layer around. Like, so you would, like, it would for. I wouldn't force you, but. It would encourage you to go to find a place that you felt was enclosed enough or secretive enough or a place where you could actually have some decent privacy at where you could do these necromantic things. And that's something that I really liked. I picked a house in Hall in Hallmarsh and um and I did most of the necromancy outside. I had my supplies in the basement. <laughs> So, like, kids never go in the basement. <laughs> but, yeah. And, once again, this is something that I really loved a lot. I like it a lot. Now, on to the worst parts about the Necromancy 4. In Dragon Age Inquisition, the Necromancy wasn't fleshed out enough. It didn't really seem like Necromancy. It seemed more like you were just bringing a spirit, or making a reverend, basically. But the reverend wasn't even a reverend. It was just a spirit. You would take the person's spirit that you killed and would fight for you. That's, that was that was it. That was it. You could self-destruct it too. And that would that'd be cool for, like, strategic, for strategic purposes. But eh. Meh. They didn't do it for me. Then in um, Dragon's Dogma. The Necromancy was literally one spell. And it was more like a shielding spell. You would use it and a bunch of skeletons would float around you. And if something got too close, it would one of the skeletons would go out and attack the thing. It would go out and attack um whatever's attacking you. And it was eh, I didn't like it that much. It was it was it. It was like that's all you got? That's all you got? Like, don't even bother putting that in there in the game if it's not like, you know, if you're not gonna flush it out some, give it some pizzazz. Some sparkle sparkle. Druids. Now, druids are very rare. I have very limited experience with druids, except out of Skyrim with certain mods. Like I keep um, a druid pack, and they give you nature mods and armor and stuff like that. Uh, one game that kind of had a druid was once, once again back to Grand Fantasia. It had a sage class, and the sage class was basically like you were like um, use nature magic and nature healing. They had the best hot in the game. A hot is heal over time. And I liked it. I liked that. I liked turning into different animals. There was a um, a gorilla, a wolf, a bird. And that was it. Yeah. Each one had their own advantages and had their own advantages and disadvantages. And I liked that about it. But not many games have a druid in it. Like RPGs. I know a lot of MMOs have a druid, but not many games have an I mean um like games like for Xbox One and PS4. Like, non-multiplayer uh, games have a druid. So, if they start doing something like that, I would really appreciate it. I like it. I think it's it's one of those aspects of magic that aren't explored in games a lot. Like, druidism and stuff like that. But if they did, I think it'd pay off. Especially if they fleshed it out right, made it look good. Give, give its own feel to it. Bards. Now, bards are more musical than anything. And the caption says, I may not have killed a dragon, but 20 ranks and bluff sure makes you think I did. 
Now, bars are using more of a social class in games. Um, they're a buffer, debuffer. Well, no. Nah, sometimes they'll be a debuffer. Sometimes they'll be a debuffer, but they're primarily a buffer class. And as I said, they just rally you, make you feel more inspired. But I always like the, the thought of using infusing sound waves with magic. And then when you played a certain song, you can like strum the chords really hard and then boom, a blast of sound wave would come kind of, kind of like a shotgun. Like since it's a sound wave and sound goes everywhere, it couldn't be very, it couldn't be a targeted blast, but if it could be like a shotgun blast, I'd really like something like that. Because when you shoot, when you shoot a shotgun, it, it spreads. So same thing like that. Like the further it goes, which would have it would have a limit how far it could go. But the further it goes, the weaker it gets. But the closer it is to you, the stronger it is. And I would like something like that for a bard. I've only played one game that had a bard class that could actually like attack somebody, and that was maybe no Yi. Besides that, not many games have a bard class as that can be offensive. But having a bar class in general is cool. Like I always like my, I always like wands and spell books, which are very spell books aren't used very often, sadly. And uh, staffs, those are cool to me. But having some like a guitar, or, like a drum, or like a flute, and when you play music a certain way, you could cast a spell. I always thought that was really cool and really practical. I like practical magic because let's say you're well, entertain people for money, all right? You're trying to. Um, <clears throat> Get some clothes or whatever, or food, or food for your next meal, or, for your, or supplies for your adventure. You could use that, and I thought that'd be really cool. I wish more games would play with that aspect, or try it out, or more MMOs did it. I know MMOs have a lot of druid classes, but not a lot of bar classes, I said, have an offensive uh, standpoint, especially a magical one at that. Hey guys, what's up? And um, I hope you guys enjoyed. This is the end of the video. Now, we've been sitting here talking about magic, about druids and wizards and witches and all kinds of stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed. This is what they call gaming talks. No, I talk to you about various different games and different aspects of them. Now, in the comment section below, tell me what you think. Give me your two cents. No, talk this out. No, tell me what you think about bards or mages or druids and how more games should have them or how they should remain like rare or, you know, stuff like that. Tell me what you think about Skyrim or how you like how they handled magic, so on and so forth. No, Skyrim Masters coming out. I may toy with a little bit. Probably won't do too much on it because I already played the game a lot. <laughs> like old plays dedicated to it, but still. This is uh, Moonlight Lotus here. The lover of magic and everything that's magical. So have a magical evening. Magically hit the like button. Magically share with your friends. Magically leave me a comment about magic. Moonlight Lotus, over and out.